Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. And today, we're going to be doing a Q&A video. Uh, a couple days ago, I asked you guys for some questions. And I like to do Q&As every now and again. So I figured it's been a little while since we've actually done one. So I figured, why not, why not do uh, a Q&A? We're probably going to have another one coming up in April. But for now, this one's going to be for February 20, 2018. Is that what year it is? Yeah. 2018 and by the way we hit 13,000 subscribers so that's pretty cool but uh, yeah i just had you guys ask me some random questions um here in our youtube community post chat thing community tab so uh let's go through them um let's see christoph loffler says ass or tits ass all the way uh let's see max emil automoland says what is your favorite country to play in eu4 ck2 and hearts of iron 4 well ck2 i don't play EU4, um, I don't really have a favorite country, although I'll admit, I think playing as Byzantium in our Byzantium campaign was probably some of the most difficult, but also the most fun I think I've had in a long time. Any other countries? I gotta admit, Albania was pretty fun too, actually. Albania was a good time. And then Hearts of Iron 4, I don't really play Hearts of Iron 4 very much, but if I had to pick a country, probably Germany or something. Um, I don't know. Let's see, um... CDM Mapping and Strategy Gaming says, I'm working with a couple of friends on a new map, Grand Strategy Game, about Greece in the 8th to the 2nd century BC. Once I finish it, would you like to check it out? Yeah, sure. That sounds fun. It kind of reminds me of EU Rome. Europe Peter Results Rome. I think they might be announcing Rome 2 in Paradox Con, PDX Con. We'll see. Let's see. Charming Druid 9. Uh, what's your favorite game ever, ever, and will we see it on the channel? That's a hard one, actually, because I'm not necessarily sure I have, like, a favorite game ever. I mean, like, some of the, some of the, I know some of the best games that I've ever played would include, like, Half-Life 2, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. Um, Halo. Halo was pretty cool. The first one, I mean. Halo Combat Evolved. I mean, yeah, those those are like those are like some of the best games that I've ever played. Um, I'm not sure if I have a favorite game ever, though. I mean, Victoria 2 is is a game that I love. I love Victoria 2. Anything that has to do with like industrialization and colonization stuff, Victoria 2 is pretty cool. So I would say, yeah, but I'm not sure if I have like a specific favorite game. Um, let's see. Arian Agoli says, Do you have any favorite YouTuber or gamer? Not really. I do have a lot of people that I follow. Um, uh, Timio, he does a lot of, you know, Rainbow Six Siege and Battlefield stuff. He's pretty cool. I watch Jim Sterling. He's pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Smart Donkey is a good friend of mine. Um. Anybody else? Anybody big that I watch? That's probably about it. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't have any, like, favorite, favorite YouTuber. Um, Podcastage. Yeah, Bandrew Scott. He's an awesome dude. You guys should check out his work. Um, he's, he's a good friend of mine as well, actually. But as far as like a specific person, no, I don't think so. Not like a, not like a favorite. Like there's no one favorite I couldn't pick. Yeah, not really. Uh, see Tyler Kerrigan says, what do you think about doing a super campaign run? Spending all the Paradox games, maybe starting as a Baron in CK2 and eventually hitting, uh, Hearts of Iron 4 by the end of it all. Um, I mean, I've thought about it. I just, I would find that it'd be really just not entertaining after a while because literally going from... The CK2 start date of 769 AD all the way until 19, what, 48, I think, is when Hearts of Iron 4 ends. Like, what what would be the point of that? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't I don't really know. I'm not convinced that it's fun. Um, I think I think Kelvin or somebody has a mega mega campaign. It's like one of the most famous on YouTube or something like that. It's either Kelvin or Avac. Uh, go check them out for a super campaign. I, I really don't see the the interest in in doing a super campaign uh he did panther says how did you manage to get so good at u4 and hearts of iron 4 well first i don't actually think i'm i'm that good at either of those games i'm probably competent enough but i don't think i'm like so good um hearts of iron 4 definitely not i hate that game and then eu4 i just watched a lot of Roomba, and i also watched what he makes mistakes of <laughs> so um like what to do and then what not to do that's how i got good but even then I mean, you know, I've only been playing EU4. I only really got into Paradox games in like 2015, 2016 by watching Aruba. So I don't know. I'm not necessarily sure I'm good at the game, but. Hmm. 
Um, DDR Jake is also awesome. And Flurry Worry. I love watching those guys. Uh, a Ruma collab? Yeah, I wish. I wish, Mason. <laughs> Let him know that you would like to see a collaboration. <laughs> yeah. Um, con places. What are your favorite non strategy games? Um, you know, I, I am actually, I used to, I was addicted to TF2 for a long time, Team Fortress 2. I, I could go back to the game just anytime and I'll, I'll have a good time. Yeah. Team Fortress 2 for sure is, is just one of my favorites. Um, Half-Life 2. Um, probably Rainbow Six Siege is actually pretty fun. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I'm actually really good at that game. I love that game. That game is pretty fun too. I just, I can't play it too much or else I get addicted to it. And there's just this whole thing that just goes bad. Um, any other favorite, favorite games? I mean, I, th I think that's about it. I, I, I mean, I love the Battlefield franchise. I'm actually a really big, I'm a really big FPS guy, believe it or not. Even though my channel is focused on strategy, just because that's what I wanted to do. I mean, you guys also know I want to do a lot of first person shooter stuff on the channel. We may experiment more with that in 2018. Um, but I love, I love first person shooters. I really do. And it, Battlefield, Rainbow Six, Counter-Strike. I love those games. Team Fortress 2 though is, Team Fortress 2 will always hold a special place in my heart. If they ever release a Team Fortress 3, which is unlikely because Valve can't fucking count to three. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. We'll play the shit out of that game. Uh, let's see. Joe's Luzar says, hi, I have started watching your channel recently and I really enjoyed your recent Byzantium playthrough and as well as Zoroastrian Timurids. I've noticed you have lots of knowledge and history in particular about Byzantium and Asia Minor. Uh, so my question is, where are you from? I mean, if you come from that region, Adrian sounds Greek to me. <laughs> Adrian is actually Latin. It's it's supposed to be Hadrian with an H in the front of it. It's a, it's a Roman name. Uh, so no, I'm not Latin. No, I'm not Italian. If, you, it's a, if that's what you mean. I'm not Greek either. Um, I am American. So my question is, where are you from? I'm from America. And then, and if not, uh, if you do or did stuff related to, related to history in your life, did you take classes? Did you teach yourself as just a hobby? Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I've always been interested in history. I've always been good at it. The way that I kind of study history, I just, you know, I'll go on Wikipedia, I'll read books, I'll read textbooks, encyclopedias. I have a lot of encyclopedias and things like that. I was that kid that like went to the library after school, you know, like middle school, high school, and just read the encyclopedias and just literally just volumes of shit just random countries random people random events like that was me that's what i used to do so history comes really easy to me and like i can you know to shoot out dates and timelines and theories and all sorts of shit it's really just been a hobby for me honestly um i mean i go to university now and i study politics in specific so i study political science and political economy and that's what i do but like history is basically attached to politics you can't have one without the other so I do a lot of history. I took a lot of history classes in, in college, but I'm not a history major. I'm not specializing in history, but it is just something that I know. And uh, there's just, there's, it's just been very, very helpful in basically everything in life, you know, learning how to like analyze sources and documents and policies and legislation, things like that in a historical context, you can really use that for any walk of life. So that's how I learned history. Um, you know, I would like to say that that games like EU4, or Victoria 2 or something like that have helped me with history, but they really haven't because they're they're based on history, but they're not historical, you know. As soon as you hit unpause in any game that you play that's by Paradox Grand Strategy, they just they, you go a historical, you know. They're they're not railroaded to be historical simulations of the world. So, and that's fine. That's that's totally cool. Um I mean, I enjoy these games just because I always get to exposit and kind of, you know, talk about history that most people don't know. Most people who play these historical Grand Strategy games actually don't know that much about history. So I like to be that Let's Player that just talks about history and explains things and talks about people and certain events and certain policies and all sorts of stuff like that. So, um, let's see. All right, Snail says, who's your favorite director? I'm, I'm assuming he means film director because, you know, really there's no other... I mean, there's like theater directors. Um, that's a hard one. So... I'm not sure if I have a specific favorite, but like Steve McQueen, he directed Hunger, Shame, 12 Years a Slave. Um, David Fincher. Oh, dude, David Fincher's work is amazing. Uh, Denis, Denis Villeneuve. Villeneuve uh, he's fucking awesome. He's directed Sicario. I think he did the new Blade Runner, right? 2049. Um, Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. He directed The Revenant. He directed uh, Amores Perros. He did Beautiful. Um, yeah, if I had to, he did Birdman as well. If I had to pick a favorite, it's, it's gotta be between Alejandro Gonzalez and Yaritu 
and probably maybe David Fincher, but even then, I'd probably pick Inyaritu better. Yeah. Um, Sidney Lumet. Um, David Lynch. David Lynch is awesome. Any other big directors? Like my favorites. Like favorites. Um, that's probably about it. Yeah, I would, I would have to say it's a, it's a big competition between probably, probably Inyaritu and you know Guillermo del Toro is pretty cool. Um, Inyaritu and probably David Fincher are like just just they're just they're, their work is so good it's not even funny. Um, Sensor Rock said, is there a possibility you can give uh, Mayu and Taxes another try? Mayu and Taxes. Another chance with each update, it seems more and more like a superior way to play U4. I I don't know, maybe. I mean, I want to get back into immune taxes, but at the same time, like, I don't actually think that's what it is. I don't think it's a superior way to play U4. I think there's a lot of things that it makes unnecessarily complicated. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if we'll go back to immune taxes. We're doing a lot of Victoria 2 right now, so we'll see. Well, uh, I'll give it another shot, and, and you know, we'll see. Let's see. Ron Yans says, how big is your Donga? It's huge. And then Gadzoots HT says, what's the hardest playthrough that you've had with any Paradox game? Honestly, the Byzantium playthrough might have been might have been our most difficult. Um there's a lot of shit in that campaign, the Byzantium playthrough, that like just did not go well. I got like super unlucky quite a few times. Um The Byzantium playthrough was really difficult because we were trying to get Modern Nostrum and all that all that shindig. That was pretty fun. The only other th playthrough I could probably think of would be like maybe the albania game or when we did our very hard hungary campaign because a very hard difficulty in eu4 is like stupid hard <laughs> the ai buffs that it gives is fucking ridiculous um probably the byzantium campaign i think is is probably yeah it's probably the most difficult so and uh, that's it guys that's all the questions that we had for this q a so if you guys want to see more questions for q a maybe next month or something like that or who knows when Please leave them in the comments down below. If you have any other questions, just, just comment down below. And uh, I'll be talking with you guys down in the comments down below. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I'll uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. So thank you so much for watching as always. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.